Well, today we're going to continue our conversation on the cells on the transporter DOCA. Remember, these were installed in 1919. I'm showing my age, I have a hard time. 2013. So, over eight years ago, these were installed in this vehicle. They were driven. Uh, for a while and then they sat. So most of that eight year period, these cells just sat in this vehicle, in the treasure chest, in the California desert. So saw kind of extremes. Uh, if you're familiar with the desert, it can get below freezing and it gets well above 100. And so these cells were just in this vehicle not garage, just, you know, outdoors for that period of time. They were not used or cycled. So it was a test on just, you know, worst case scenario. And so we did a video where we showed the cells as received, what the um, voltage was, and what the... Um, you know, pack voltage was what the individual cells voltages were. And I, I want to say, I have to go back and look at that, but they were within uh, like three one hundredths of a volt as far as the state of charge when received. Uh, first time we charged it, it took approximately 20 amp hours to uh, charge it up. So then what happened is we drove the thing and we've driven it around and just, you know, cycled the cells and, and got it, you know, a little bit of uh, exercise. And then we took it down to, uh, well, I wanted to take it down close, ended up taking it down to where it shut off on its own. And that was not intentional. That was a mistake on my part where I had forgotten about uh, <laughs> a bunch of local driving I had done and I drove it home and then was driving it back down to this location and five and a half miles out I ran out of juice. And I said my fault. I didn't look at the the gauge, I was just assuming, oh yeah, I can go this far, and I uh, I could have, had I not forgotten, I'd already driven, uh, uh, you know, extra distance with, um, with the cruising around town. So let's take a look what happens when you run it all the way down. In all of my years of driving, I've only run out of fuel one time, and that was back in the early days of uh, diesel vehicles. I bought a, a new diesel pickup in 1981, and there weren't as many diesel stations, and I was towing, and again, I was like six miles from uh, my destination, and I ran out of fuel. Uh, and this is only the second time uh, that I've run out of, uh, you know, electrons in a, an electric vehicle. And so, my fault both times, I was, I was pushing it. Uh, this time, I was pushing it unknowingly. Um, granted, I was trying to get it down low. That was the whole uh, objective, was I wanted to get the thing down uh, to you know a very low state of charge and then I was just going to drive it around you know uh, the neighborhood here by the warehouse and take it down to a certain voltage well that voltage occurred on the freeway on the interstate at 65 miles an hour <laughs> and so I was able to limp off uh, uh, there was a, a, an on-ramp a couple miles away and I was able to make it the off ramp and then get to a parking lot uh, of one of our locations and deploy the solar panels and 
I charged off the uh, solar system we have. We've got 5.25 kilowatt hours of batteries just for the solar setup. And so I plugged into the inverter and so as to not, you know, use much out of those batteries, I deployed the solar array also. And so I was taking energy from the sun and from my auxiliary onboard battery pack. And got a phone call from my son. An hour later, she was ready to roll, made it back. Did the cruising around, you know, right here in this area and took it back down to that shutoff point. And so this pack is programmed to shut off at 103.3 volts. And what happens is we have a threshold in there uh, so that it will shut off and then if it bounces back, uh, I forget what the uh, upper threshold is, but it's, it's, it's right about nominal is where we usually put it. We put it at that, at that nominal threshold. So, um, I forget what the nominal is on this pack. But anyway, when it bounces back, and it only takes a matter of seconds, so, you know, it, it dropped because you have voltage sag and you get down there towards the bottom of your capacity and the voltage gets low. And when you're pulling, you know, close to 200 amps, driving this brick down the freeway, uh, it'll shut off. So anyway, by the time I took the off ramp, I had gone from 65 miles an hour down to be just above 40 miles an hour, between 40 and 45 miles an hour, and took it off. Luckily, it was a Sunday morning. There really wasn't any, tr I was kind of in a bubble. There wasn't anybody around me. <laughs> and so I, I ran with my flashers and was able to stay in my lane until the last 100 yards. There were some truckers approaching, and so I went for the shoulder. It's an interstate, nice wide shoulder, and they went over a lane. It's a three lane in that direction and so no worries everything went smooth so once we get it back here and and replicate that <coughs> excuse me in kind of a, a controlled setting we pulled the shop and we allowed the cells to sit overnight or actually 24 hours so they'd be at an at rest but we wanted to have taken all that capacity out and so, surprisingly, not to me, but I know to most of you, surprisingly, I've played with, you know, these lithium iron phosphate batteries for a long time, thousands and thousands of cells that we've bottom balanced and, and had in vehicles, and I kind of know how they behave. And so, the unknown, though, was, how are they going to behave when they sat in the desert for eight years? That was the unknown. The fact that we went down there and, and the pack uh, had been, you know, slightly discharged. I don't know if that was, you know, the voltage had dropped over time. I doubt it. I think that was pretty much the state of charge uh, when the thing was last driven. I don't think it dropped 20 amp hours sitting. So the cells all being close, I, you know, I kind of expected that too. We drove our Carmen Ghia 97,000 miles over seven and a half years and all 44 cells, and they were all within one hundredth of a volt of one another. So I, I kind of, you know, already know what to expect. Like I said, the only unknown was what happens if they sit all that time. These were cells that were being used on a daily basis. I know what to expect. But not once they had sat in a metal box in the desert. So what we found was these are the individual cell readings. Like I mentioned in earlier videos, there's 38 of the 180 amp hour calb cells in this conversion. And the uh, green is the voltage that the individual cells were as we received the vehicle. Okay, 
last driven date unknown. But I know it sat for um, probably seven years without being driven. And so these are the voltages after we take the thing and we run it to where it shuts off. And if we do the math, that's like about, I don't know, 2.7 volts or something. We usually program to shut off at 2.75 volts. If you look at the discharge curve, you know, the, the minimum cell voltage is 2.5 for lithium iron phosphate. But if you look at the discharge curve between 2.75 where we have them shut off and 2.5, there's no range there. You know, had, had I allowed it to go that, you know, a uh, couple tenths more, I would not have gone, you know, much further. Not enough to get me to my destination, for sure. There's just no range at that point. That's where that curve is getting pretty steep, okay? So, but what it did was it protected these cells from damage because you don't want to go below that 2.5. And so, what we're going to do, well, hang on, I'll get to that. So, there's two cells that got down pretty low. There's 2.52 and 2.54. The rest were pretty good. And there's a, uh, like I said, originally there was only a, a three one hundredths of a volt difference in the, you know, at rest as received voltages. We had a 0.66 volt variance when we took it all the way down. And I think that is due to the fact that it sat for an extended period of time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to re-bottom balance these cells. They were bottom balanced when installed and they are now, uh, you know, out of balance. You can see from point from 2.52 volts to 3.18 volts. And that was just due to uh, the differences in internal resistance. I, I think that these cells, uh, once they're re-bottom balanced, they're gonna be good for another 10 years, no problem. Here's the interesting part. These are 180 amp hour cells. And 80% of that is usable. I mean, the whole, you know, 100% is not usable. Only 80%. And so 80% of 180 amp hours is 144 amp hours. Okay? And guess how much we were able to use when it shut off? <laughs> exactly 144. Now, there's a piece of that that I haven't shared with you yet. So let's just talk a little bit about cells in general. There's three capacities, just like there's three voltages that we want to, you know, be aware of in our conversion. The three voltages are that minimum voltage, 2.5, the nominal voltage, 3.3, and the charge to voltage, 3.5. Those are the voltages in there. Well, when it comes to capacity, there's three capacities, okay? There's the rated capacity, and that's at 180 amp hours. And then there's the usable, which is 144. And then there's, you can call the measured, or actual, which is approximately 200 amp hours. It's so one thing about these cowb cells that that you know is nice, but we don't ever think of it that way. But it's that margin, and that margin is that they're not really 180 amp hour cells. You know, in actuality, 
measured capacity is always a little over 200. So the fact that after eight years they had 144 amp hours, which was the you know the rated usable amp hours. The only reason that's true is because we had that margin that you know we don't normally think about or consider. So there was some degradation. They're not perfect. They didn't go eight years and, you know, absolutely perfect. <laughs> no. But they still have the amount of capacity that we consider. You know, in use of the vehicle, you know, we're thinking we've got a maximum. It's like if you have a 10-gallon a, a gas tank. You don't use 10 gallons, but in your head you know, I've got 10 gallons maximum. And I, I don't, you know, get down to eight, we're going to start sweating it, you know. How many miles per gallon are we getting? Are we going to make it? Um, I look, that's why I've never run out before. I, I don't take them all the way down. I seldom go below 60 or 70 percent. I, I opportunity charge. When I have the opportunity, and I'm going to be somewhere for you know any period of time, I plug in. If I'm going to be there 10 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't plug in. If I'm going to be there a couple hours, I'll plug in. And so I'm always topped off. And, and you know, I, I just don't, it's not something I ever really consider. I, you know, I, I look at that gauge in the morning, and I you know, may look at it when I get in the car to, to leave. Same way with my fuel gauge. I don't stare at the fuel gauge all the time. I check it periodically just to make sure everything's kind of where I perceive it to be. So I was pleased that after all that those cells have been through, that they still have their rated capacity. I was a little, you know, I won't say surprised or anything, but. You know, I, I had no idea what that number was going to be. I was hoping it would be smaller, but that's just reality. And so we're going to fix that by bottom balancing those cells. And we'll do that. We'll drive it. We'll take it down. Not, not to there, but we'll get it close. Because we bottom balance the cells to 2.75 volts. So we'll probably take them down knowing what our... our our, our deviation is now, we'll know where to take it down, and then we'll um, bottom balance it. It should go real quick. And that gives us a chance to take the cells out, inspect them, um, clean them off. Uh, you know, just visually on top, everything looks, uh, you know, the, the interconnects and stuff. There's, there's a little bit of corrosion. Their copper interconnects with a zinc uh, coating, and, it, you know, eight years in the desert. So uh, we're going to kind of freshen things up just like we did with the motor and re, you know, re bottom balance them. And I'm kind of a stickler where we bottom balance them to all be exactly 2.75 volts. Exactly. We'll put them back in the vehicle. They're wired up in series and they get charged as a pack. And like I said, in the car Magia, seven and a half years of use. 97,000 miles, they're with, within, you know, 0.1 or 0.01 volts of each other. All within one one hundredth of a volt. So, unfortunately, that's, uh, this, this would be acceptable. This is not. So, free bottom balance. I just wanted to, you know, uh, this is just another installment in that you know, uh, original uh, kind of question was, you know, hey, this thing's been out in the desert for eight years. What, you know, what's the status of these batteries? And I didn't know what the status of the car was going to be. I mean, it was a 12-hour drive for me to go down and get it. Um, I had five days to make a decision whether or not to go get it. That's how much notice I had before the thing was towed away and impounded. And so, 
uh, you know, I wasn't sure I wanted to make that investment in time and energy to drive down to the desert from Northern California to get something that had been sitting in the open, you know, outdoors for eight years. Fortunately, my son was within an hour uh, of the um, of that location. So I had him run by and do some reconnaissance. And he said, hey, Dad, it looks pretty good for having sat eight years in the desert. He said, I think it's worth, worth your time. So we got it. I measured the batteries. I was encouraged. The motor wasn't working at the time, so I couldn't drive it. We had to uh, use uh, a lot of sweat and muscle to get the thing uh, to the trailer once we got it in line with the trailer, I let electricity uh, through a winch to bring it into the trailer, and then we transported it here. So it's been fun uh, taking a look at it and, and, and trying to imagine what this thing had been through. So anyway, uh, the batteries were that kind of unknown. And, you know, it's, it's good to see that they have uh, that much capacity. Once they're bottom balanced, I, I'm going to enjoy driving this thing. I mean, I've been driving it, but I'm going to, you know, enjoy this vehicle for a long time to come. We also have uh, set it up. we got another uh, series going along, uh, intermixed here, where we've added a solar... Uh, set up to this vehicle. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of uh, use the uh, tagline, you know, solar charged VW. That's not the objective. Yes, you can charge the vehicle with solar. And I did, <laughs> which, which turned out to be, you know, uh, serendipitous because, hey, I, I was going to have to call a tow truck just for, you know, uh, I ended up three and a half miles, you know, from here, but was able to uh, to recharge myself and, and, and make it here, which was nice. Um, but the solar setup is really designed. Like I said it has it, you know, an onboard separate battery pack. It's a five and a quarter kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack with a uh, 4,000 watt continuous pure sine wave inverter um, and, and then it's got the solar array and the, and the purpose of that is kind of twofold. One is it's to address that you know question that we've heard so many times and can I add solar panels to my vehicle to charge the vehicle? Well the answer is yes and no. And we'll get into that in another video. Back to the purpose. The purpose of the solar is for to demonstrate uh, job site and emergency uh, solar power. So this has been long enough, boring enough, time to say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.